Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to a new episode of Tester Tech. And this is the last episode in the series of 10 cool open source test automation tools. And as you can maybe see, uh, the weather is improving here in the Netherlands. So I thought, well, why not shoot the intro on the outside? And what I'll show you today is test containers. I actually created a couple of videos about test containers already. I used the Java version. I also used Python in conjunction with Kanyu. But I thought, well, why not revisit it and uh, show you how we can use it in this whole range of test automation tools as a test automation supporting utility. So I will use uh, again the Python version of it and I'll show you a demo working demo with Selenium and uh, having uh, Selenium being called by the test containers show you out of the box example and a working demonstration. And for who is interesting? I think it's interesting if you want to see how the 10 cool open source test automation tools series ends. If you haven't checked it out already, I have the link here to the playlist. This is the last episode. And yeah, I try to make it a little bit special for you. And uh, without further ado, let's dig into the video. Let's start with the installation. If you have a virtual environment, you can just type pip install uh, test, test containers. And as you can see, it's already satisfied, but that's it. And just if you're using Docker, make sure you can run Docker. That's it. So concerning test containers, I have this project here and uh, let's, uh, let me show you. So I was looking through the modules, those are installed and the site packages. And then I have uh, a couple of them. These are the ones I was interested in. And test containers. Test containers contain some, uh, yeah, some, uh, some scripts, mainly uh, wrappers around the test containers tool. With some examples right here. So you see Docker Compose. You can use that as in a test container. Elasticsearch. Uh, some general one, Kafka, local stack, MongoDB, MS SQL, MySQL, Neo4j, Nginx, Oracle, uh, Postgres, Redis, and finally the one I will be showing is Selenium. You see here there are two images, Firefox and Chrome. And here you see some example uh, so let's let's use that one. Uh, copy that to the clipboard. G edit new window. So control V. So let's start a new project. A new project. In case you're wondering, this is PyCharm. And if this is done, you can just right click and you see hi PyCharm, this is being printed here. So now you know you have Python installed and it's working. Let's delete that main. And in your virtual environment, you have all your libraries and your dependencies. Let's grab that snippet we had. Let's right click new uh, Python file. Let's call that uh, hello test containers. Selenium, paste it in there. Okay, now you see this, and it says unresolved reference Selenium. Let's install that. And if you are curious what is installed, you have here uh, below the tab, you can search for your installed packages, and so Selenium is indeed installed, like you can see here. So that one is good. Let's do um, to make it work. You also need the test containers, of course. So let's install that one. And I have my container tool Docker. I have it already installed. And uh, yeah, that's 
this should basically work already. So let's right click and run that class. You see pulling image Selenium standalone Chrome is the default. That is done. And as you can see here, uh, element not interactable, which is explainable because if you open up an incognito window, and if you visual uh, Google, you see here there's a model pop-up uh, presented. Okay, and so you cannot interact with the below elements. So you need to click this this element here. And as you can maybe see, uh, it is the button ID is L2 A G L B. So let me touch up that script. So you do the driver get this one, and then you do the web driver find element, oops, underscore element. And this actually find element by name actually is deprecated, and you need to use by ID. And ID is the one. I had here and then click click on that element and import that by here you click it away and then you send hello and then just to to show you the demo I will also uh, yeah save a screenshot web driver save screenshot and then I can update this is by name so let's put find element and by name okay I think this is okay let's uh, clear this and uh, run it again and see uh, if we have the screenshot saying hello in the search field There you go, this is completed. And you have Google uh, with hello right there. And uh, this is a test. Done. This is a test. As you can see, it's very easy, very easy to, to set up and uh, just start automating your, your web browser using test containers in Python. So that's cool. Let's uh, switch to the next part and that is uh, pipeline integration. So this is like a unit test, uh, like some boilerplate for a unit test. And I think it's uh, it's good that, yeah, that you have it because you will have improved assertions, for example. So self assert and for example, um, yeah, just is instant, is none, is not, less, logs. So you can do everything from assertions. Assert equals, then um, title google.com. Uh, probably it will fail and then it will spit out the right title. So I changed this to uh, return a string and then this I think title was a reserved word or something like that uh, and uh, yeah this 
should basically work. Run that unit test. So there you go. So it says uh, assertion error google.com not equal to Google. So that is great, of course, from developing scripts. And if we just type Google, run, it should pass. So now it says OK, test has run. Some deprecation, but it's OK. OK, so I think this, this is looking OK. But let's let's now go to the next part, and the next part is the the pipeline integration. I have my uh, my uh, Jenkins environment here. I've already installed Docker, and Jenkins is running. And let's uh, let's continue. So uh, GitHub, GitHub repositories, latest one test containers Python Selenium. Of course, I will have the links in the description and in the show notes. So I'll put the URL of the GitHub repository in there. That should look okay. And yeah, what can we do? So maybe I'll just use a shell script. Uh, shell. Shell. Uh, first, Python module virtual environment, and then source vm uh, bin activate. Okay, and pip install. TXT. Okay, if that's all done, then it should run the Python, uh, run this one, copy, paste. That's it. Save it. Let's see if this runs. Let's build it. And check console. So we have a Docker exception error while fetching API version. So that's the issue here. Let's see if we can let. Uh, yeah, that's due to the fact that uh, Jenkins users not allowed to use Docker. Probably let's ps Jenkins. So that's the user is Jenkins. Okay. After a restart, I think it's uh, working okay. So it's pulling the image. The first time is always a little bit slow, of course. But with minimal minimal installation, uh, you have that whole Selenium present for you, and then you can just start uh, automating. Running the script now, and as you can see, it's finished. It's okay. Let's see if we can grab that screenshot. There you go. So yeah, that's the example of uh, the pipeline integration. Pretty awesome. And I will have the scripts, of course, in the show notes, and you can just uh, start using this awesome project for your automation testing efforts. Let's go to the closing of the video. All right, so let's talk about scoring of test containers Python. So it's fairly easy to install, 
so just a pip install and you're good to go but you do need to take a docker installation or any other container tool into account but uh, for the rest it should be straightforward examples provided like i showed you in the demo there's examples in the code and you can just copy paste with a little tweaking then you can uh, run it easily it's very very fast uh, to execute considering the fact that it's a container but yeah uh, if it's booted if it's uh, the image is uh, downloaded then the container spun up uh, quite fast and then execution is uh, fast as well offering of test cases yeah it's a little bit different uh, of terms of a tool but like i showed you in this demo if you create a unit test case then you can easily offer your test cases around these test containers and it doesn't hinder you it only speeds up the authoring of test cases in my opinion login debugging is okay uh, dashboarding and reporting you have uh, you have like that screenshot you can uh, you can do there's also some movies uh, test containers for example the java test containers has some standard integrated uh, movies uh, but there's no dashboard uh, it's a different kind of tool of course but uh, yeah you have enough uh, to get going so the pipeline integration like i showed you it's easy to do uh, just for in my case jenkins was uh, running um, so i needed to add the jenkins user to the docker group and then uh, it was good and community support there's uh, lots of information to find about the test containers and uh, yeah uh, that's it hey that's it for this video so that brings us to the end of the 10 cool open source test automation tool series for 2022 it started in false dam and now i'm finally closing it and to be honest it was a little bit challenging combining this weekly video upload but i really enjoyed the experience and it helped me learn a lot and i hope it inspires you to also investigate these tools in this open source space very promising indeed and uh, yeah you can talk a lot about these tools and use them in your projects and really enthusiastic about uh, about yeah all of them to be honest and before i forget uh, because this is the last video in the series I will have a slideshow of all these scorings in the tools with some nice background music so you can just uh, look at all the scorings in uh, consecutive order uh, and just uh, see how they compare and of course I'll have the slides uh, anyway so but just uh, chill with the music and see all these scores if you're interested in that just wait and uh, you will see these uh, slides coming past so yeah um, I'm closing this video out uh, and uh, yeah What's next? I'm not sure yet, but I think I will take a short break from these weekly videos and just collect my thoughts and spend some more time with the families in the weekend. So really looking forward to that and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe and leave a, leave a thumbs up. It would be greatly appreciated and I'd love to hear from you in the comments what you think and maybe you have some suggestions and uh, that I can take aboard and uh, yeah, you'll hear from me soon and see you in the next one. Bye bye.